Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome to Citizen 8, where we wrap the week's current affairs with the best political team on television from a very, very Auckland perspective. Warning, where is fair and balances Fox News. Joining me tonight in my evolving panel of bloggers and Auckland opinion shapers, he is the political columnist for the NBR, political consultant, commentator and moral shepherd of the right, Matthew Hooton. And he is a columnist for the Herald on Sunday, commentator, political rapporteur, uh, and union boss, Matt McCartan. Welcome to you both. Coming up tonight, issue one, first week of parliament, how did the government and opposition do? Issue two, clause nine of the state-owned enterprise act has been allowed to become a treaty and national sovereignty issue. Was that political mismanagement or Machiavellian scheming? Issue three, the electoral commission rules the John Key Radio Live politics free show broke the rules while the PM's electorate chair hands out a million in New Zealand on air funding for pro-government documentaries. Is there a critical media left in New Zealand? And we'll end the show on a final word. But let's kick things off with issue one. The first week of Parliament is up and running. How did the opposition perform and how did the government respond? Matt, other than Clear Cohen's release of New Zealand on air funding decisions, mm -hmm. which we'll get into later, National brushed off most of Labour's attack. What is Labour doing so wrong? Well, this is what the interesting thing is. You, I mean, you talk about the opposition. You know, mm. It's MNP now, and mm. the opposition, you know, is four parties. Yeah. And so when you you have got a new leader, leader and, da and da David Chera, and look, it's not going to be immediate, you know, he's on the front board. Mm. I mean, you've got Winston Peters, Honi Harawera, and Russell Norman, mm. all more experienced than him yep. in terms of being oppositionists. And so, you know, you're not going to have, you know, the media is a bit late lazy, you know, what's he doing now? Yeah. You know, and I think it's a bit, it is a middle sprint. Mm. You know, we've got a three year sprint. So he isn't going to perform well mm. as, uh, well, as a leader for a while. Yep, sure. Um, so I don't think you read it in one week. But, you know, when you look at it, you know, masters like Winston P Peters, you see, I mean, there's yes, the real opposition. Yes, yes, and yes, yes. Um, a class act, yep. you know, he got key on the back foot. Yep. I think the big exposure, which has been reported else, elsewhere he got, which I thought was a master stroke, is when he got key to to reveal that in fact the Māori Party had never raised the asset sales know, in, oh, in their coalition talks. Yeah. And I thought, see, that's the difference between him and Shearer. Yeah, yeah. And so I think what Shearer and them are desperately want, wanting mm. the four parties to work together, mm. but why should they? Sure, sure. You know? Sh but shouldn't, I mean, we agreed that Shearer is, is fairly green, but doesn't that mean green. Grant Robinson should be stepping up? Jacinda, yes, I just, I mean, yes, but they're not that Parker wasn't very good, was yeah, it? Well, you know, um, that's true. And it's partly, it is a completely new team mm. and it's going to take time, mm. you know. And so those of us who are on the same left will give them more license. But if they are still amateurs in a year, in yep. a year's time, that's, I mean, at the moment, in three years' time, and it's on Matthew's yep. eye, I will I predict, yep. is you've got to put Marnie on a change of government. Absolutely. At, today. Yep. But if they haven't stepped up in a yep. year's time and actually are landing big blows on the government, mm. government then they're in trouble. Matthew, one of the big questions was how would the very green Shearer go up against Key? And his terrible answer to who owned the water suggests he hasn't become much sharper over the summer. How long do Labour stick with his meandering style of leadership before the whispering campaign for Cunliffe begins? When do we start seeing the barbecues? Oh, no, he's there for a good year. Yep, yep. I mean, there's no, uh, there's no problem. He was elected um, convincingly. There's no one in that caucus really who wants to see David Cunliffe <laughs> as, as leader. And no he's, friends. He's yep. gone back to, to being lazy. So, so you know, he, 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 David Shearer will be fine. Do you know, we talk about what might happen on the floor of Parliament, mm. and um, I'm kind of having worked there an addict, and I watch Question Time because I'm a a junkie, a dickhead, really. political junkie, political <laughs> junkie. <laughs> but the fact of the matter you're, is, David oh, you're, Shearer, oh, you're a shepherd. David, <laughs> David, David, <laughs> time on your hands. David Shearer on on Thursday, for yep, example, yep. he wasn't at Question Time. He was spending an hour on Radio Live. Mm. Now he's going to reach a hell of a lot more people um, talking on Radio Live for okay. an hour than if he had been gone to Question Time on yep. Thursday. So, look, what he needs to do is, um, and something Helen Clark did in the '90s, and John Key. Uh, when he became leader, he needs to get around New Zealand Stay out of and meet as many people as possible. Right. We have a population of four and a half million. You actually, if you work hard, mm. can meet a hell of a lot of people personally and through the media if you just work hard. And I think those things are more important than set piece well, debates. Yes and no. Yes and no. You know, we know is that to the public, no, no one gives a damn, mm. right? But mm. it is the media gal 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 gal
the battle mm. uh, ground. And so the perceptions are created there. And so it is important that Don Brash was always hopeless and, and, and that led somewhat to his being rolled. Mm. So, I mean, that leaders have to perform in Parliament. But I agree with Matthew, and as I was saying before, I think they've got a, you know, a year um, before that, because no one's expecting him to be a great debater, uh. and no one can match the Winston. Now, the danger he's got yep. is being overshadowed right. by real killers like Winston and Honey Harawera mm. and Russell Norman. Yep. They are actually better at it because uh, they have more practice. Only on the floor of, in the end, this guy's the candidate for Prime Minister. This course, guy is more likely uh, than John Key to wake up on New Year's Day 2015 as Prime Minister. So, so it's well, none of the others, he's, 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 he's not going to get overshadowed by them in the long run. Um, and he has done some things. I mean, he, and I know this sounds trivial, mm -hmm. but he was seen surfing, um, right? Uh, he's He's been sharing. Yeah. I mean, people want to like him. You're right. They're, they're most likely Prime Minister, yep. which is exactly what he is. And, and, there's, and I'll tell you what, when Don Brash rolled Bill English, that was about October 2003, yep. People in the National Party say, well, we need momentum, we need momentum. But Don Brash didn't do anything until that Oriwa speech in late January. Right. Right. Yeah. You, you choose your timing, and that's what I'm sure David right. Shearer is doing. Matt, the I media had, right. a, had a field day over Hone's first blunder uh, last year when he missed a vote. They were utterly silent on the fact that the Māori Party didn't even turn up on the first day of Parliament this year. Are the Māori Party too busy melting down to make question time? Yes, I think so. I yeah. think... Like it was either a deliberate snub mm -hmm. or it was just lack of pay, paying attention. It might be a bit of both of those. But what we've got is a Māori party now sort of reaping the consequences of their relationship with National. And I think they are in meltdown. Mm -hmm. you know? um, um, I think how they get out of this now, the problem I've got about the asset sales, how do they, when Winston is now exposed, they never raised it. Right. So now they've got to keep a moral thing. And so... I think they're doomed if they do and, and, and doomed if, oh, well, if, oh, well, if they don't. And I think um, that, that with Tatiana and Peter both saying they'll step down and yeah. all they've got is the order rule, yeah. good luck. Yeah. You know? Matt, you, Matthew, on. your, your best friend, Winston Peters, uh, showed everyone how opposition works, didn't he? Zeroing in on the many questionable examples of spending that Whanau Ora will throw up was the only time he looked shaken this week, wasn't it? Yeah, the idea that the taxpayer pays for you to have a family get together uh, doesn't play too well. No, uh, but he <laughs> had to media. defend it. But right? as you were saying, you know, I mean, Winston Peters' best thing was when he um, did get John Key to say that they hadn't raised Section Nine in the in the coalition negotiations. I mean, it's not quite. Right. I mean, they obviously raised the state enterprises sale because they've got an exclusion that they will vote against every mm. aspect mm. of those asset sales when it comes to mm. Parliament and. The interesting thing is John Key's going to have to negotiate um, a treaty clause, and we're coming to this shortly, yeah. with ACT, with, sorry, with the Maori Party, and then he's going to have to get ACT to vote for it in Parliament because it's only ACT and United Future that uh, sure. will be voting for, for those um, share issues. So very strange situation that ACT will be voting um, to put in the Maori Party's uh, treaty clause into the law. Is that a reason why National have given weirdly act so much ground on charter schools and, and Catherine Isaac heading that. Oh. Is, is, is that part of the deal? A couple of charter schools is neither here nor there and that's a job for Catherine Isaac. I mean, oh, Is it just busy work to keep well, her out it, of the well, way? Well, you know, it, it, National and, and most people on the centre right, and in fact most sensible people understand there needs to be a bigger choice of different types right. of schools and uh, Nationals wanted to do things like chartered schools for 20 or 30 years and it should just get on with it. Which is the key point, you know. which is actually, I think what National are doing is actually working MEP better mm. than they have in the past and, and Labour too. They're using the out parties to raise issues, sure. which they actually don't want to raise, right. give them the win. Right. And that, because does anyone actually think for a minute that John Banks cared one iota about charters? It never came well, up. I don't know. Well, suddenly, no, it's well, no, it's a core act. I mean, it's, been, it's, it's one of the most important issues to act, right, is, is right. that issue. Um, I mean, they genuinely believe it would be good for everyone. Right. No, 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 I get that. But, you know, but I think it wasn't like a clever issue, move. Was it? it wasn't an election no, issue. No, no. But National is, because if, if you listen to the tape with, with, with mm. Banks and uh, the, you know, the, the, the teacup um, um, uh, debate. <laughs> farce. Uh, yeah. Farce, um, yes, exactly. But the rapport between those two, yeah. right, you can just see them say, well, why don't you raise the char the mm. charter schools? Right, 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 right. National okay, can't the... be taken seriously on that issue until it says that every single kid 
every single kid, not just in Christchurch East and South Auckland, but also West Auckland and in fact throughout the country should have the same educational opportunities as the kids in Renuera. And that's what charter schools are about. But so it's a token two school trial is Question, pathetic. question of both of you. Uh, who would you rate as the best opposition for the first week in Parliament? Who would you rate? Oh, Winston Peters for yep. getting that, con that concession from John Key. Winston? Yeah, it has to be Winston. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, let's move on with issue two. Clause 9 of the State-Owned Enterprise Act has been allowed to become a treaty and national sovereignty issue. Was that political mismanagement or Machiavellian scheming? Matthew, what is going on here? When John Key tried to assert that Clause 9 had never been used legally to prevent asset sales, he was, as Mei Chen pointed out with their long list of legal examples, simply wrong, wasn't he? Has National stumbled into this treaty minefield by mistake or by pig arrogance? Well, I think the first person who blundered on this was um, Peter Sharples, who's the Maori Party's economic minister. Mm. And he should have been all over this. Uh, and, and so that was a blunder. And then John Key blundered. I mean, that statement was just so spectacularly wrong. Um, the person who gave him that advice um, should, should be, be sacked, should be sacked immediately. Yeah, yeah. Or, um, although John Key himself should have sort of remembered. I mean, 2005, he was a front bench for the National Party. The National Party ran a campaign um, for that election saying that things like Section 9 were, were terrible and they were going to get rid of them. Right. Um, now, for him then to say, oh, it's never been used in law, it was just completely wrong. And I mean, he, I'm sure he's profoundly embarrassed about it, but both right. he and Peter Sharples didn't seem to understand the significance of this issue. Terry and Aturia right. did. Yep. She's fixed it and she is going, uh, you will see a treaty clause in this new legislation. Oh, sure. It's almost exactly the same as Section 9. And I think you'll see more than that. And Tariana Turi is going to pull off a big win here. Really? Well, we'll see. I mean, I, I remember this is, most things in politics aren't great conspiracies. Yep. You know, they are muck-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yep. And what this is, it goes right to the relationship between Key and, and, and Peter Shark Harples, right? To a large extent, they're apoliticals. Right, you know? right. And, and Key still doesn't actually get the treaty right, and why it's in there. Pizza, because of his relate, they've built a personal relationship. It's too casual. And it's casual, right. mate. And so what happened is, yes, they were supposed to talk about it. Tatiana was at Ratna. Yeah. Right? Pete, mm. did, uh, yeah, and Key, oh, it's all right, AP. It's just, oh, yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. all fine, you know? Not thinking about it, right? Mm. And so they think they've, oh, well, they've consulted. So, so Key in his mind, because this happens all the time, I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. I've sorted out with Pete. So sure, okay, sure, sure. You know? And of course, Ta Tariana, who's more political, mm. sees it immediately on right. two fronts. One, she actually believes it, mm. right, is number yeah, one. Yep. The second thing is she understands the politics of it. And then mm. suddenly, all that, and Key, right to the end, didn't really get it. Right. So oh, how, how, how he does now. Try, he does <laughs> now. But it's going to go. Right. But it's only, you know, all this is just pretend stuff. So how, 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 <laughs> elegant, how elegant is his solution looking right now? I mean, that was a weird choice well, of word. How yes, elegant is it looking? Because that's the way you, he got out of it some other times. Isn't that an elegant way? You say, well, that's a nice word. But no one is thinking, what is that? But Matthew's absolutely right. Yeah. Right? Unless he can get Tariana around it. Right. He ain't got and they're, gonna be, they're not going to be not elegant. Gonna Matthew, Bill English is being begrudgingly dragged around the country to pay lip service to consultation, which will end with a mere week open for submissions before the law change goes ahead. This hastily organised hooey consultation process is a farce, isn't it? Well, I also, wasn't wonder, supposed to happen. I also wonder the degree to which those things ever reach yeah. many people at all. I think the, the um, iwi leaders group met with the Prime Minister and others at Waitangi and they discussed this issue. Um, I think that's probably um, a really? fairer reflection of what the commercial end of Maritim thinks about this issue. Yep. Than They're not happy, employee. are they? They're not happy. Well, I, 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 well, they're happy if they get a share. Right, well, I think, right, I think, right, I think right. the elegant solution is going to consist of yeah. basically a um, Section 9 that binds the Crown as majority 51% shareholder. Yeah. The Maori Party, if they're smart, will also require some treaty clause to be put in the constitutions of those companies. Mm. Now, it's actually harder to change a company constitution mm. than it is the laws of New Zealand. Oh, really? So if the Maori Party is smart, that's where they'll be looking right. for a treaty clause. Now, from the point of view of the companies, 
Um, I don't think it'll devalue them much. The Treasury will have a fit over this, but sure. I think John Key's a more sophisticated international businessman than the Treasury right. officials. Right, right. Basically, if you think of Mighty River Power, which is one of them, it already uses the Waikato River. That's in co-management with Tainui. It's working in partnership with Tainui all the time. Right. I don't think a treaty clause in the law or in its company constitution is going to devalue those shares. Right. So I, I, I think that's where things will end up. Well, well it's, it's, it's kind of a bargaining chip for those who want to buy it. Because well, and, and probably we'll some of those off. entities will be shuffled a little further up the queue. These shares are going to be tremendously popular. I hope they put a, a big price on them and don't discount them for political reasons. I mean, it's a cash cow. Um, right. Well, it's a good long-term investment. Mm. Um, it's, not, it's not ever going to d d give you a lot of high returns, but you'll never probably lose. So it's a good, safe investment. And, and everyone, in the, selling them everyone in the world... <laughs> which, which brings back <laughs> the idea why well, we're that's, selling that's them. A, because because it's arguably ideological. they'll perform better. Yeah, because it's ideological. Um, there is, a, there is an aspect to that, absolutely. Right. There is an aspect that says that Air New Zealand probably has benefited from the scrutiny of the share market compared with if it was 100% mm. owned. Um, mm. And that seems oh, to so work. Interestingly, we to interestingly Air New Zealand, <laughs> um, interesting Air New Zealand doesn't have a treaty clause and no one seemed to um, be concerned about that for the 12 years it's been in state ownership. Well, to be mm. fair, the, <laughs> Ma the Māori Party wasn't around. <laughs> Great point. It was the Labour yeah. Party, remember? Matt, has Key managed to merge Māori nationalism with economic sovereignty by trying to dump the treaty clause? Has he has he accidentally built bridges between opposition groups who didn't see any mutual ground between them? Yes. There is actually some movement going on between the opposition parties, the trade unions and organisations like Grey Power and mm. the social movements to actually build a broad coalition against the asset sales. Mm. And so what he's done is actually started to raise other vo right, vo right. Vo voices as well. And so people are starting to get more and more concerned. So what National want to do is hit the ground run running and get them sold. Right, you know, right. And get them going. Yep. This now is hold up. Yeah, you know, and the Māori yep. thing is running off to you know courts and you know mm. is what is what the Māori uh, count oh, well, count the door. Or let's delay this. If people start to smell a rat, now why are we selling them? Mm. Because Matthew's already said the case. It's a good buy, mm. and you think so. We're selling it for what reason? Right, right, you know, it's right, a good right. investment. Yeah. You know? So that will start to change. So if there's time, what National Net needed, it did go to the people. It said this is what we want to do. Yep, so yep, they yep, can yep, say, yep, look, we yep. we've got a mandate. What they need is get it through fast. Right. Right. Maybe that's not going to happen now. Right. Uh, he, he's accidentally merged a whole bunch of groups against him, hasn't he? No. Look, this is this will be this was just the Waitangi Day issue. If there hadn't been this one, there would be another one. Um, it was an absolute fiasco and stuff up by the Prime Minister mm. with that clangor over Section Nine. I mean, that's true. Uh, and and they'll resolve it and they'll move on from right. it. Right. And and there's no in the end, Parliament's sovereign. The government has a mandate for this. The Maori Party will get the things it wants. Act yep. will be made to vote for the Maori Party's amendments, yep. and all will be well. Um, <laughs> if but if there's a large percentage that does get sold off overseas, I mean, people just there won't be. The, 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 there's look. You've got, be part you've of got the, well, the that'll be part of. You've got the iwi groups that want to buy. Yep. Um, you've got, you've got Kiwi buy, Saver right? accounts. Mm. You've got the Cullen Fund, uh, and then they say New Zealand mums and dads will be net. New Zealand mums and dads won't. Go. I, I think the irony of this money. is a lot of this is going to go to basically state-run yes. organisations who will buy into um, it. Who, who will end up buying. And I'm sure the Cullen Fund will want to buy um, its 10% share. Yeah. ACC will probably do the same. So yep. it's a, it, basically what's happening with these companies is they're remaining. They are becoming like Air New Zealand. They're going to be somewhere between 51 and say 80% state owned. Mm. and they're going to be on the share market with the reporting disciplines that are required and a couple of independent directors. Question to you both. Uh, what are the odds of the Māori Party walking? What if, what if, what if this elegant solution None. doesn't come out? None? None. Because, because they all have vested interests to not have it. So this is what I think. I think it's a face-saving exercise right. all around. And uh, both par par parties and the elites, the establishment, need it. Right. You know? Because if the Māori Party uh, are humiliated too much, they have no choice, you know. Right. But and the, when I talk about that, I talk about Tariana. Mm. You know, mm. now don't forget Tariana and Pete. These are practical things, right? When they walk, what it means is they spend the next two years on the back benches. They have they 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 have a huge cut in their salaries. They lose right. their ministerial houses and their cars, but also all their staff will lose their jobs. Right now, don't no, ever uh, no, no 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 people underestimate well, she walked this. from Labour. No 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 no. But the thing is, yes, she did. But mm. she was a minister outside of cabinet with no staff. But Pete's also a factor. And the people who staff those offices have very strong relationships with National. Mm. You know? Oh, okay. And people yep. underestimate the advice those ministers get. So it will be symbolic. They will have to make some concessions for political reasons. Sure. 
and they will. Mm. And so they won't walk because if National allows them to walk, there goes their majority next election. And suddenly Banks is in a position where he's got a lot more power, doesn't he? Well, I don't but think... The, the reason they, they won't be held is, they, is they have to differentiate themselves from the rabble and the mana party. So yes. if they go into opposition, so that's right. It, it, there's no point in them both being opposite. They are, Hone Harawera and his stupid nephews will you know, carry on and yell and scream and all that sort of stuff. And the Maori party will deliver um, a treaty clause in this legislation at least as strong as the one that Geoffrey Palmer put in the State and Enterprises Act 1986. And they will say, that's what we've delivered. Yep. And that's better than the rabble. And that's, that's a far better um, political strategy for the and Maori that's party. That's why they need than, to pull it off. Right. Yeah, and they reasons. will pull it off um, for the reasons we've been talking about. Yeah. Thank you, panel. Moving on with issue three tonight. The Electoral Commission will refer Radio Live to the police for breaching the Broadcasting Act while... Claire Curran revealed emails in Parliament showing the PM's electorate chairman, who complained about the poverty doco, has green-lighted a million for three pro-government documentaries. Is there still a critical media in New Zealand? Matthew, the Radio Live decision to give Key an hour-long show where he didn't have to talk about politics is another example of Key's ability to use uncritical media to further his pre profile. But shouldn't Radio Live have been more sensitive to this, especially in light of Stephen Joyce's multi-million dollar deferment of radio licences. Oh, I think the issue here is when you start trying to regulate speech, you always um, get bad outcomes. And of course, we got rid of Helen Clark and her evil uh, Electoral Finance Act, which tried to regulate all speech in New Zealand, including what you're allowed to yell through a megaphone um, in election period. And really, um, we would be better with far less regulation of what people are allowed to do and say in this country. So you, you, you don't think there was any problem with Radio Live's decision? No, no. I think that that was a, I mean, it was, it, they did it for the ratings. Um, I, I doubt that John Key won any votes that particular day. It was a reasonably interesting radio. Uh, Phil Goff could have done the same if he wanted. Um, you know, you just don't want to, to be trying to work out what speech is allowed and what's not. I mean, it's interesting you, you say that it's these documentaries apparently um, are going to be pro-government documentaries. Are you blowing, saying blowing that the, so you are, I guess you're saying that the one three days before the election was an anti-government documentary. You're making that distinction. I think in the end, you just have to roll with the punches. And I think that the, I can understand why the government was very angry with that um, documentary that did screen and when it screened. But in the end, you're just better to say, so be it. In the long run, everything works out. You start regulating free speech and you're in big trouble. So this is a free speech issue for you? Well, yeah, and it, it, you can never do it successfully. You know, you, you always have your anomalies. Helen Clark was worried about the exclusive brethren and she ended up stopping the unions from being able to yell through megaphones. I mean, you know, it's, it, it was, it, that was crazy. Con, con, yeah. was but I agree with half of what Matthew's saying, mm. except for the part, though. It was Radio Live, I think, made a bad decision because what it did it, it does help get the votes right if you get an hour you know where you got between 80 and 100,000 New Zealanders listening mm. you know to two other hosts and you give it over for an hour and he's allowed to interview people he likes you know and he had good guests on that day right? yeah. it was, it was actually place. good radio <laughs> and it was a thing, right and people go you know, he had, um, he had the... Bradson and the yeah, All Black Captain. Yeah, Bradson and the All Black Captain, you know, before thing, and chatted and got the calls and people go, what a nice guy, he's one of us, he's one of a bloke. You know, you just talk about David Shearer. Though, Shearer, Shearer well, you he's know, doing the same have, today. Yeah, well, no, he's been interviewed, which is different. But I agree, you know, there was, a, there, there was a nuances. I thought that Radio Live would have been more careful. If they'd been smart, I would have had Phil Phil Goff on mm. the following mm. week mm. to do the similar thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they didn't. So they That's the where they are in trouble. That's right. Right. Well, he, I don't Matt, think he wanted the, to. The, the appointment of the PM's electorate chairman, Stephen McElroy, to New Zealand and there was questionable enough that he pushed to sense of political docos that embarrasses the government demanded I, I, answers. I agree, I agree. But now it's mm. been revealed that no. he has green-lighted three pro-government no, no. docos. Shouldn't he Now, Matthew's right, Zealand and he sort of says, well, is it? Is it? Look, if it smells... You know, like poo, uh, it is poo, uh, you know? Uh. And I got a word, it starts with C and it's called corrupt. It's right. a smell of corruption. I don't think it's deliberate. No. I think it's a perception. Yep. And this guy's the chair. And in those mm. sorts of roles, it's just a no-no. Mm. And I think it's either key being arrogant or just thoughtless. Well, I'm right. deeply suspicious of New Zealand on air as an organisation anyway. Yes, I uh, think always. that it, it basically exists to f um, funnel taxpayers' money to baby boomers to watch... Um, TV documentaries 
uh, that, that no one wants to watch, right? <laughs> I mean, it, so basically, it, it doesn't fund innovative community television. No. It just funds the old establishment who have been running New Zealand media for the last 20 or 30 years. Mm. Um, and look, that, that documentary was some far left activist who, who wanted to make his documentary from that perspective. I think it's far. I think it what looks you've got like a far left because there's nothing else but right wing dribble. <laughs> well, that's why. Well, that's actually, know, I think it was quite um, mainstream myself. Well, uh, here's the thing: it's all in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, it would yeah, be a lot yeah. better. I think we need a more innovative New Zealand on air that funds more things yep. and more interesting things rather than high priced things like on TV three and TV and Z mm. that are just so old fashioned. Mm. Uh, and and just fund all sorts of people, right wing mm. people, left yep. wing people, and make yep. some good television. That that would be more important than anything else. Question to you both: uh, New Zealand slipped five places in the Media Freedom World Rankings in the first term of National. How much further will we fall by the end of the second term? Well, if the right wing have, I will have, I will have their way. That um, you know, it'll be command um, control of the media. No, I I I just think that any government which is in power for too long wants to control the message you right. know? and I think the the, the the teacup gate thing you know that kind of smelt of that you know mm -hmm. you know and that's only after three years when mm -hmm. Helen I mean Helen Clark took, took nine, nine years, years to get to she, that level she, she only went completely mad in, in, yeah, in, yeah, after yeah, the yeah. third term yeah, after third 2005 term. Yeah. and key there's a kind of a I'm not saying born to rule but it's that kind of prickliness you know how dare you? Look, yeah, you have to be yeah. careful on this. I mean, she just went, I mean, the, the, the government in this country's recent history that tried to regulate what the media was allowed to broadcast, what people were allowed to say was the Helen Clark regime. Thank God they've gone. One of the reasons that John Key became Prime Minister was because of the excesses of that regime on this very topic. Mm. As John Key, as he inevitably will do, becomes more dictatorial and more haughty, all Prime Ministers do, it's yeah, not personal. That's what they do. That's what uh, they he do. needs people around him that will say, actually, hang on, the free press is important and we meant, we're national. We're meant to stand that's up right, for freedom. That's right, that's right, right. Sure. And, uh, I, I hope we don't see that same trend from him. Well, let's wrap the show with last word. Uh, Mr. Hooten, your last word this week is? Well, I think it's going to be interesting how David Shearer um, performs in the next couple of weeks. Mm. His talk that he'll be giving a big speech. The topic is going to be, as I understand it, or being considered as children. And um, I th understand he th feels that instead of running against um, John Key, he's going to try and run against Chris Kahui. And he's going to raise some difficult questions about how the society and the government bureaucracy looks after kids who are in danger. And he's going to question the role, the Whanau First policy of most of the bureaucracy and whether really uh, putting a kid at risk um, in the hands of the very people most likely to attack kill, or kill them is the best policy. And uh, the National Party will be in a difficult position because, of course, the Maori Party, its coalition partner, yeah. is absolutely far now first oh. but most people kids that are killed right. in this country or raped or assaulted are assaulted by their far now and I mean that Pakia are not um, yeah, 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 the far now yeah, is yeah, the danger yeah, yeah. that represents the kids most face and David Shearer, as I understand it, will challenge the idea therefore that we should have far now focused social services fascinating uh, your final word this week Mr. McCartan I think um, we see over the next week, week, week or two, there is a building coalition on the ground, mm. you know, and there's, and that wasn't there in the first three years of this government. And so what you've got is you've got a competing opposition part parties, but uniting around things like the asset sales, mm. and it will start to develop. And I think um, we'll start to see more of that. I think having the warfy uh, strikes mm. and lockouts, mm. you know, that's going to be a polarizing uh, throughout things. March. Yep. Yep. Throughout March, and so yeah. I think it will be interesting. Is in Parliament. You know, and about mm. the performance of David Chichir is going to be closely watched, but also what's happening around in Arwell and the community. And I think, um, you know, I think it will well, be Well, last time National blocked out the Wharfies, we got 54% of the vote. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> thank so, you, yes, the, uh, thank yes, you for the yes, yes. yes, but here's the thing is, it's a different world now. <laughs> because <laughs> then they just brought the army in and they just loaded them. There was no international thing. You see, loading the boats is one thing. These days, you've got to unload them. I don't think the war is right. very popular in the society. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hoot. Thank you, Mr. McCartan. Ladies it's and gentlemen, community now. to my final <laughs> word. Uh, the furor that has erupted over health professionals wanting to cut images of Pity Wupu bottle feeding his daughter from an anti tobacco advert is just another example of our nation of idiots minus any volume control. This has got bugger all to do with breastfeeding, the, excuse the pun, breast beating here 
here is our p cultural stomach ulcer, political correctness gone mad. Alcoholism, denial, rugby worship, beneficiary bashing, and political correctness gone mad are the four compass points of the New Zealand babble that passes for public broadcasting. This storm in a D cup is, an, is as embarrassing as it is tedious. When it comes to socialising healthy norms, public health advocates have millions to spend against corporates who have billions in promoting the very opposite. That an anti-tobacco advert would want a unified standard of health norms is boringly uncontroversial. Asking for a cutting of a bottle feeding image is as acceptable as asking for a casual shot of Weepu drinking a glass of wine or bottle of beer to be cut from the advert. That such a decision can lead to, but men don't have breasts arguments as some sort of intellectually justified counter is eye rolling. This has nothing to do with fathers feeding their kids or spending time with their kids or bonding with their kids. It's just an excuse for Shire Volk to get up on their favourite It's PC Madness Gone Mad hobby horse. It's terribly tiresome. If you like tonight's show, please join our Citizen A Facebook site and connect with other like-minded new citizens and follow me on my Citizen Bomber Twitter and Facebook page. Thanks for watching, Fano. Good night, Aotearoa. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.